Hey guys, how's it going? Tess back again with episode number 8 of the Spurs career mode and we come into this one not in Europe in the first game like the past two. We do have a game in the Premier League. It's Aston Villa and uh, as you can see we've got a game in hand on the teams above us. We can go second if we can win this game away at Villa. Of course you'll see we'll go two points behind Arsenal who still sit top. So I guess it's kind of realistic considering as I'm recording this Arsenal are top of the Premier League. But so we get off to a decent start. We haven't created some great chances at the beginning of this one. So Dardo just can't quite get the uh, the headed down there to uh, to ensure that he gets on target. Grazes the top of the net. Paulinho strikes an absolute gorgeous one from distance and uh, draws a great save out of uh, Brad Guzan in goal. Then Eriksen is going to whip in the following corner. Soldado's no, it's for Tongan goes up in fact from the corner and uh, unfortunately hits the bar with that glancing header and we don't quite take the lead. But we do take the lead here as you can see Soldado's going to turn his high. Fantastic feet to get around the defender there to set up Christian Eriksen and that is a screamer. Absolute strike from 20-25 uh, yards from Christian Eriksen. Calm down lads it's only, uh, it's only natural. 1-0 lead and uh, we're actually going to make that 2-0 just before half time here. David Alaba pushing down the left hand side, whips the cross in Sandro can't win the first header, can't get to the second one, the ball's cleared, falls to Eriksen who's going to have a strike, blocked, fortunately falls to Soldado with lovely, lovely technique, falling back, twisted volley into the bottom corner of the net, puts us 2-0 up in the 44th minute, quite similar to uh, Eric Lamella's goal in the late on against Cardiff in the last episode, really nice uh, technique to, uh, to standing volley that, just swivel the hips, Really, really nice finish, and uh, that is what Soldado is all about. He is just an out and out finisher, a poacher, and uh, he puts us 2 0 up. But before half time, they're going to pick up a free kick here. Obvious handball from David Alaba. Charles and Zogbia is going to whip the free kick. <laughs> He's absolutely fantastic. That is a wonderful free kick from Charles and Zogbia. And they peg us back to 2 1 just before half time. So uh, they wanted to go in with a clear two goal. As you can see, the, the substitute there is absolutely delighted, waving his hands over his head in delight. But uh, what a free kick! So so accurate across the uh, across the top of the wall as it jumps, just splits in between two players' heads. And now uh, we push into the second half. Paulinho goes close to uh, putting us three one up. But that was really the only effort in the second half of any particular note. Wasn't the best of halves, and we do pull away with three points. And uh, that is decent. That puts us second in the league. But uh, we are back to Europe now against Kuban Krasnodar, who uh, personally I had no idea who they were until I played this game. And as you can see on screen, eventually, I've had to slow it down because it, the uh, the league table isn't on screen for that long at the minute this year. It just kind of pops up and disappears. But uh, as you can see, we're sat top of the league, level w with Krasnodar, Kuban, on, uh, on four points after two games. So it's going to be tough. And uh, I'll be honest, I did underestimate them because I'd never heard of them before. I did underestimate them. But as you can see, that was Jibril Cisse there with a shot across goal that's uh, just trickles against the post and Popov gets there first to, uh, to make it 1-0 to Kuban. And uh, I did a bit of research, I googled them, and uh, they're actually members of the Russian League. Uh, I genuinely had no idea, but we get a chance for the rebound there, and Danny Rose shows no composure whatsoever and just rifles it over the bar. I was really disappointed with that. If he'd have done better then, then that could have got us back on level terms, but we have to rely on good old faithful Jermaine Defoe to put us, uh, put us back on level terms at 1-1. You, you get a 10 achievement there for, uh, you actually get an achievement for using the outside of your foot where it would have... Uh, been the obvious thing to do to use your weaker foot. A uh, good just as you can tell from the the, uh, the name of the achievement. Who needs a weak foot, etc. But uh, we're level into the second half. Made a couple of changes to try and freshen it up. Paulinho is going to do some work on the edge of the box. Find Chadley. Shows great feet to turn one way with the defender. Turn the other. Unfortunately, can't quite find an accurate finish to end it. And we do only pick up a point from that Europa League game. So we won the first game against Genk. We drew away at Malmo, and we've drawn at home against Kuban Krasnodar. And I think personally. That's my fault. I did underestimate them. I put out a weakened side and uh, they made us pay. So uh, we still sit top of the group. Level on points with Kuban Krasnodar with five after the first round of fixtures in the Europa League group stage. We've obviously got to go away to Kuban. We'll have Genk at home and we'll also have Malmo at home as well. So uh, actually, no, we might have Genk away. I can't quite remember. But of course, as you can see in the background, we do have a uh, squad report going on. Feel free to pause it at any point if you want to have a closer look at some of the uh, some of the players' individual stats. A couple of players have made some nice uh, some nice progressions so far. But uh, as you can see, Moussa Dembele going up one, even though his form is actually horrific. A lot of the players have uh, have some really really good form, but Moussa Dembele. I felt nice playing with him. He felt fine playing with him, but apparently he's uh, he's not performing very well. And this really really annoys me. Again, uh, uh, 
we've been shouting at EA for years. Players don't just rapidly decline when they hit 30, 31 years old. Jermaine Defoe isn't declining as a footballer in real life right now. He shouldn't be losing stats on FIFA. That is so, so infuriating. Hopefully for next gen or perhaps, you know, next gen on the new engine or perhaps for FIFA 15, they'll actually listen to the community on more than just sort your servers out. We want single player matches back because career mode is a big part of, uh, a big part of FIFA uh, gameplay. A lot of people enjoy career mode just as much as Ultimate Team, but of course Ultimate Team is where all the money is for EA, so they don't really care about uh, about career mode. But I care about career mode, and uh, I'm enjoying playing this Tottenham career mode, and you guys have been absolutely fantastic with your response to the Tottenham career mode, as well as the Ultimate Team stuff on this channel, so I cannot thank you enough for the huge support that you continue to show this channel with likes, with comments, people subscribing every single day, it's fantastic, so please do keep it up, and of course feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind that would be superb there'll be a link on screen above the subscribe button and in the description to uh, subscribe if you haven't already and a link over the play button on the right hand side to the previous video in this series if you did miss it so thank you very much for watching guys feel free to check the channel page for anything you may have missed throughout the past few days and i will see you next time